ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have the best role model the best example for everyone to follow young or old is the role modelship of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha the worst of affairs are those three things we introduce into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah everything we introduce in this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. So inshallah, for tonight, for tonight we want to review Surah Al-Hujurat. It is Surah number 49 in the Qur'an, in the Noble Qur'an, the words and the speech of Allah, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is 18 ayat. There's 18 verses in it. And it was revealed... As a, a Madani Surah. The Madani Surah means it was revealed after the Hijrah when the Prophet ﷺ and his companions had already established themselves in Medina. It is named Surah Al Hujurat because of the word used, Al Hujurat, in the fourth ayah. And it means the private rooms or apartments, the dwellings. Because there were some of the Bedouins who used to call out to the wives of the Prophet or to the Prophet. ﷺ, outside of the apartments or the dwellings of his wives. In this surah, we see that it was revealed in the ninth year of Hijrah. That means close to the death of Prophet Muhammad It was one of the last revealed surah. <coughs> and in it, we see that it was at the time that Islam was growing and many of the Bedouins and the tribes were accepting Islam. The purpose of the surah was to teach the Muslim community the manners concerning Allah and His Messenger Wasallam and to teach them the basic principles of social life, how to fix conflict between the Muslims, how to not spy, to not be suspicious, to not backbite, and the likes of these matters. So inshallah, we will begin as we did last time, ayah with ayah. Remember, this is the words of Allah being recited, and Allah said, when the words of, our, of, of mine are recited, فَانْصِطُوا Be quiet. Listen to it. Be attentive to it. فَتَفَضَّلْ مَشْكُونًا مَشْكُونًا بسم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Okay, so أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Again, a reminder Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَإِذَا قَرَأْتُ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ When you want to recite the Qur'an from the middle of a surah or the beginning of the surah no matter what, you always begin with أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم that you say, I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan the outcast. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful. He is merciful to everyone and everything, even the disbeliever, the one who doesn't believe in him, the one who worships some other idol or some other being, the one who worships many gods. Allah is merciful to everyone and everything. Ar Rahim, the especially merciful. He's especially merciful to his ibad, to his servants, to the believers, to those who believe in his oneness. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday illahi wa rasoolihi wa attaqu allaha inna allaha sami'un alim. O you who believe, make not a decision in advance before Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is all hearing, He is all knowing. This means, do not say anything that contradicts the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Never oppose the book of Allah, never oppose the Sunnah of His Messenger ﷺ. Qatada, he said, we were told some people would say, there should be some ayahs about this and that and this and that. And this was something that Allah disliked. We never oppose the Qur'an, and we never oppose the Sunnah of His Prophet ﷺ. 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون Oh, you who believe, raise not your voices above the voice of the Prophet ﷺ, nor speak aloud to him in talk as you speak aloud to one another, lest your deeds should be rendered fruitless while you perceive not. أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم. Verily, those who lower their voices in the presence of Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, they are the ones whose hearts Allah has tested for taqwa, for piety. For them is forgiveness and the great reward. Imam Ahmad, he recorded in his book of Az Zuhd. That Mujahid said, someone wrote to Umar radiallahu anhu, O leader of the faithful, who is better? A man who does not feel the desire to commit a sin and doesn't do it, or the one who feels the desire to sin and he doesn't do it. So Umar replied, the better is the one who desires to sin, but he still holds himself back. Why? Because Allah tested him for taqwa, to see if he was pious and righteous, God-fearing, fearing the punishment of Allah, and so Allah will give him forgiveness and a great reward for holding back. Inna al-ladheena yunadoonaka min waraa'i al-hujurati aktharuhum la ya'aqiloon. Verily those who call you from behind the dwellings, most of them have no sense. This is referring to the ones who would go outside the homes or the apartments of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ and call out to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in a loud voice. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ And if they had patience till you could come out to them, it would have been better for them. And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَأٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ O oh, you who believe if a fasiq, if a liar or a corrupt person comes to you with any news, verify it, lest you should harm people in ignorance. And afterwards you become regretful for what you have done. This is one of the first principles. When you hear news from somebody, when somebody tells you what somebody else is doing or saying, how they're living, what they saw them do, what they heard them say, what they heard others relate about this person, always check your info. Even if you know this person that's talking to you and he's a good friend or she's a good friend, verify the info you're getting before you believe what you're being told. And this is something, all of these lessons that are coming up is something that as an ummah, we are falling into horribly. You youth are falling into it. Where you gossip, and we're gonna see that. You backbite, we're gonna see those ayat are coming up. You should always check what you hear. And you should give your brother or sister in Islam the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانَ and know that among you there is the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. If he were to obey you, if he were to follow your opinions and desires in much of the matter, you would surely be in trouble. But Allah has endeared the faith to you and has beautified the faith, iman in your hearts and has made disbelief, wickedness, disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Wasallam hateful to you. 
Such are those who are rightly guided. So here we see the mischief, the sin, major or minor sin, it doesn't matter. Al-Isyan, all the types of sins, Allah made them hateful to us. This brings you to another level with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a better level where you can yani, where you can get to the perfectness of Allah's bounty. They will be the rightly guided ones. They are those who have those qualities of being rightly guided by Allah. Allah has given them guidance. He's made iman beautiful to their hearts. They love that Allah has guided them and led them to this. فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةً وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ This is a grace from Allah and His favor. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا فَإِن بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيءَ إِلَى أَمْرِ اللَّهِ فَإِن فَاءَتْ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ And if two parties or groups amongst the believers fall into fighting, then make peace between them both. But if one of them outrages against the other, then fight you all against the one that outrages, till it complies with the command of Allah. Then if it complies, then make reconciliation between them justly, and be equitable. Verily Allah loves those who are equitable. So here we see that even if there's two parties fighting, Allah calls them both Muslims. He calls them both believers, although they're fighting each other. Al-Bukhari and other scholars, they relied on this hadith as evidence that the committing a sin does not nullify faith. And this is a principle of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah, of the people of Sunnah and the group. That if you make a major sin, it does not take you out of Islam. If you sin, it does not make you a non-Muslim. Unless it is shirk, unless you associate partners with Allah or commit some aspect of kufr, right, of disbelief. Right? The large disbelief. So here, the creed contradicts the creed of some groups who say, if, you're a major, if you do a major sin, you're out of Islam. This is not the view of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ, he was narrated to have said, he said, Ansur ukhaka valiman aw madluma. He said, help your brother, whether he's the oppressor or he's been oppressed. They said, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ, we can help our brother if he's being oppressed, we can aid him, support him, comfort him. But how do we help him if he's the oppressor? He said, تَمْنَعُهُ مِنَ الظُّلْمِ مِنَ, مِنَ الظُّلْمِ فَذَاكَ نَصْرُكَ إِيَّاهِ He said, by preventing him from oppressing others, stopping him from harming others, this is how you will help that brother. <clears throat> إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ So in this ayah, we're on the 10th ayah out of the 18. The believers are nothing else than brothers in Islamic religion. The Muslims, they're brothers and sisters to one another. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. When they're fighting, when they're disputing, when they're not talking to one another. It is upon those who know both parties to try to make them at peace, to forgive one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يعني, He said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً The believers are nothing but a brotherhood. It means all of the brothers and sisters in Islam. The Prophet he said, المسلم أخو المسلم لا يظلمه ولا يسلمه. The Prophet وسلم, he said, the Muslim is the brother to every other Muslim. He is not unjust with him, nor does he forsake him. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدِ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِيهِ He said, Allah helps the servant as long as the servant is helping his brother or sister in Islam. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ إِذَا دَعَ الْمُسْلِمْ لِأَخِيهِ بِظَهْرِ الْغَيْبِ قَالَ الْمَلَكِ آمِينْ وَلَكَ بِمِثْلِهِ If a Muslim makes dua for his brother or sister when they're not in their presence, when they're not in their face, when you're in sajda, before taslim, when you raise your hands 
invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you make dua for your brother or your sister in Islam that is not in front of you and no one can hear you, then the angel that is with you will say, Ameen. And they will say, and for you the same. So if you ask for them to be cured of illness, then the angel will be saying, Ameen, and may Allah cure you of any illness. And there are many more ahadith that we have of this, that the believers should be kind and merciful to one another, compassionate to one another. Al-mu'min al-mu'min kal bunyan yashuddu ba'aduhu ba'da. The believer to the believer is like a part of a building, one part strengthens the other. This is how a building is built. There's walls in here, there's pillars, there's posts that are important for the building to strengthen the other parts of the building. This is how we should be as Muslims if Allah wants to write us as believers, if we want Allah to write us as believers. Why is this important for all of us, adults and the youth? Because so many times we take the, the right, we take the position of defending a disbeliever over a believer. You will let a disbeliever insult a Muslim and you're sitting there laughing with them and that's your brother and sister in faith. This is the level we have gone to, especially you young ones who are in school, you have a lot of Muslim friends, a lot of non-Muslim friends. And how many times have you aided someone other than your mother, Muslim brother and sister? يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى يكونوا خيرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسى أن يكون خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا أنفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالألقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الإيمان وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ O oh, you who believe, let not a group scoff at another group. It may be that the latter group, the other group, is better than the former group. Nor let some women scoff at other women. It may be that those other women are better than the former group. Nor defame one another. Nor insult one another by nicknames. How bad is it to insult one's brother after having faith? To call your Muslim brother a faithful believer, a faithful believer along with you, but you call them, O sinner, or O wicked person, or O evil person, and whosoever does not repent, then indeed such are the valimun, the wrongdoers. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this ayah prohibits mocking and ridiculing one another, name calling one another, belittling one another, humiliating one another. We've had Muslims do this in Masajid. We've had Muslims do this in Hajj and Masjid al-Haram to one another. We are not allowed to mock or ridicule anyone but your brother and your sister in Islam in faith has that right even more. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ الْكِبْرُ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ وَغَمْسُ النَّاسِ وَفِي رَوَايَ غَمْتُ النَّاسِ Arrogance is refusing the truth and belittling people. If you belittle someone else, if you make fun of them or mock them, you have an aspect of arrogance. And what did the Prophet ﷺ say? مَنْ كَانَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ مِنْ كِبْرٍ لَمْ يُرُحْ رَائِحَةُ الْجَنَّةِ The one who has an Adam's weight of arrogance in his heart will not smell from the fragrances of Jannah. In one ayah, I mean, عفوًا, in one hadith, it says, وَلَا يَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ They will not enter Jannah. Just because of that arrogance. So you have to be very careful. وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةِ الْلُمَزَةِ Woe to every humaza lumaza. Hamz. This is when you defame someone by action. This is like saying, may this person be disgraced and humiliated. If you defame someone or insult them or mock them or ridicule them by an action. وَاللَّمْزْ لَمَزَةِ is by words. Again, how many of the times do you insult another Muslim? or call them a bad name, or look down on them, or you think you're better than them. This is all being prohibited. This, uh, these ayat were revealed close to the death of the Prophet ﷺ. So take heed. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhanni inna ba'd al-dhanni ithm wa la tajassasu wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه 
واتقوا الله إن الله تواب رحيم. So now another very very important ayah that pertains to every one of us, and we'll see because even here, Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyin, rahimahullah, he said, watch how the steps go. Watch how the steps go of the sequence. If a person suspects of his brother something, if you suspect of them something, then you'll spy on them. And then if you spy on them, then you'll begin to backbite on them. So Allah says in this ayah, O you who believe, if you want to be a mu'min, sisters, if you want to be a mu'mina, if you want to be successful on the day of resurrection, if you want Allah to bring you up with the believers, then listen to this ayah. Stop flipping the bottles, please. Allah says, O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicion are sins. Stop being suspicious. Stop looking for faults in other people. Allah continues to say, And spy not, neither backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? You would hate to eat the flesh of your brother. Right. To actually eat their, their skin, their meat, their bones. Of a human, your brother. You would hate to do so. So hate backbiting. And fear Allah, verily Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance the most merciful. So in these ayat, Allah He forbids scoffing at the people, looking down, I mean, Allah forbids His faithful servants from being suspicious. This includes having doubts, being suspicious of the conduct of one's family, of one's relatives, of the people in general. That's why the Muslims are to avoid suspicion without foundation. If there's no reason for your suspicion, you shouldn't have it nor should you pursue it. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, radiallahu anhu, never think ill of the word that comes out of your believing brother's mouth, as long as you can find a good excuse for it. Look for excuses for one another. Stop trying to find faults. It's almost like we love to see someone fail or do something haram, so we can go and lower their, uh, the, lower their status in the eyes of other people. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, إِيَّاكُمُ الظَّنْ فَإِنَّ الظَّنْ أَكْذَبَ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَحَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَنَافَسُوا وَلَا تَحَاسَدُوا وَلَا تَبَاغَدُوا وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the worst of false tales. It's the worst of it. It's the worst of it. In his last days when he was dying, he was going in and out of being awake and في سكرة الموت. And he was saying, As-salah, as-salah, wa ma malakat aymanakum. He was saying the prayer, the prayer, and not what your right hands possess, wa qawl al-zur, wa shahadat al-zur. And statements of falsehood, and saying you saw something, or you heard something that you didn't say or hear. Do not spy on one another. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not look at others' faults. Don't be jealous of one another. Don't envy one another. This envy is killing the, um, the ummah. We're envying one another. This is hasad, this is evil. You're wishing that your brother or sister, something bad happens to them, so they lose something that you want, that you don't have, that Allah did not choose for you. We just spoke four weeks about the heart, about the value of the heart, about how, what's the disease in the heart, besides hypocrisy, we talked about it today. Envy, hasad, that you want people to not have the good they have, because you weren't given it. This is evil. You are saying, Allah, I'm not pleased with what you chose for me. This is what you're saying. Allah, no, I deserve this, not him, not her. And our Prophet ﷺ, he commanded us, don't envy one another, do not hate one another. How we can hate another brother or sister in Islam, and yet take as close companions, a disbeliever is beyond me. And he said, do not desert one another. Our brothers and sisters in need, do not leave them to be. And O oh Allah's servants, be brothers. Be brothers to one another. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to take warning of this, and then the next point, and the rest of the ayat will come quickly, backbiting. <coughs> because it's some, something we all, all, everyone does it. Everyone does it in a way or another. And many of us think, because it's the truth, it's not a problem. In a hadith collected by Abu Dawood, that is Sahih, Abu Huraira, he said, it was asked, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is backbiting? He asked him, what is backbiting? He said, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكَ بِمَا يَكْرَهُ 
He said, is that you mention your brother, about your brother in a manner, something that he dislikes. Even if it's true, as we're gonna see. So, he was asked, what if my brother was as I mentioned? What if it was the truth? He, you know, stole and I said he stole. This backbiting. What if what I mentioned was the truth? He said, what if what I mentioned about my brother was the truth? He said, إِن كَانَ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ فَقَدْ اِغْتَبْتَهُ وَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ فِيهِ مَا تَقُولُ فَقَدْ بَهَتَّهُ He said, if he is as he mentioned, then you've backbited him. What does this mean? That means even if you tell the truth about somebody else, even if you say what happened, it's a truth, it's a truth. you're not lying about it, you're not exceeding it, you're not exaggerating it. It's the truth. Someone stole, you saw them steal, you went and told them. That's backbiting. That's ghiba. But if it wasn't the truth, then you falsely accused him. What did Allah equate this to? He equated this backbiting to being as disgusting and filthy as if you were to eat the flesh of your brother. Who would like to eat the flesh of another human, especially someone they loved, their brother? None of us would. We would hate it, we would detest it. So Allah said, so hate backbiting. You should hate the backbiting. It's not worth it. Talk about things which are beneficial. Talk about things which are good. But even if you say something that's truthful, you're guilty of this sin. And we saw in another hadith, I think I, I, I didn't put it in here, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, he walked by a grave, and two people were being severely punished, and he said these were for little things they could have avoided. They were for things they could have avoided. And he said that it was because of two things. One, they soiled themselves with urine. They weren't clean. They didn't care for getting urine on themselves when they were in the bathrooms. And the second one, they used to engage in backbiting and spreading false tales. So if you want to be punished in the grave, instead of, instead of having a grave that is wide, if you want to be punished in the grave, instead of have a grave with furnishings from Jannah, then go ahead and backbite. But this is from the most gravest of sins, the most disgusting of sins. You should hate it like you would hate to, hate to eat the flesh of your brother. So how do you make tawbah for it? You make tawbah by asking Allah to forgive you and you stop backbiting. So then the question is, how do I make it up to that brother or to that sister that I backbit? Well, there's a difference of opinions amongst the ulama, but what you should know is that some of the scholars say, stated that it's not necessary for that person that you backbit to forgive you. Because if they knew about that, it could hurt them more. Or it could make them then go backbite you. So the way you repent besides repenting to Allah and stopping that backbiting, the way you repent to Allah and you seek that forgiveness from Allah is you spread good things about that person. You tell good things about that person. You defend that person and such as such and then you can get recompensed for your backbiting. You praise that person. And this is how you can make up for it. Wallahu a'lam. Sorry, we took long on those, but these are things plaguing, especially the sisters. Uh, but it also has of course entered amongst the brothers. Ya ayyuha nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu. إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير. O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female. Here, Allah He clarifies the relationship, the only relationship that is halal, which is between a male and a female, and He made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Verily, the most honorable of you with Allah is that believer that has taqwa, that fears Allah and keeps his duty to Allah, and acts in a way to distance himself from Allah's punishment. In this ayah, we see that Islam has no tolerance for nationalism. Islam has no tolerance for you being proud about your country. Islam has no room for racism, for disliking someone because they're not Arab or they are Arab, or because they're black or because they're white. These ayat 
Allah, He created this way. In Tafsir ibn Kathir, or Afwan, in, in uh, Qisas al-Anbiya, in the stories of the Prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it is mentioned that Allah, when He created, when He was going to create Adam, He sent the angels out to different parts of the earth. And they all came back with clay or with dirt that had different colors. And this is what Allah fashioned Adam alayhi salam with. And this is where we get the different skin colors. So you're not to look down upon someone because their skin is dark or light. You're not to look down upon someone because they're from an Arab land or a non-Arab land. And the Prophet ﷺ in his farewell sermon, he alluded to this. An Arab is not better than a non-Arab, nor is a non-Arab better than an Arab. A black is not better than a white, a white is not better than a black, except by taqwa. And what did Allah say here in this ayah? إِنَّ أَكْرَمُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The best of you in Allah's eyes, the best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa. وَمَكَانَ التَّقْوَى هَاهُنَا As the Prophet ﷺ said, the place for taqwa is in the heart, that you fear Allah and you keep your duty to Allah. وَاللَّهُ عَلَمْ فَتَفَضَّلُ قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلتكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم. The Bedouins say we believe. Say you believe not, but you only say. We have surrendered in Islam, for faith has not entered your hearts. But if you obey Allah and His Messenger Wasallam, He will not decrease anything in reward for your deeds. Verily, Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Allah, He differentiated here. You can be a mu'min, and a Muslim is different. Allah differentiated between the believer and the Muslim. So He chastises the Bedouins here, who embraced Islam, and they claimed that they were faithful believers. However, faith hadn't yet firmly been in their hearts yet. The Muslim isn't necessarily regarded as a mu'min, as a believer. But a believer, if they raise themselves to that level because of their firmness of faith in their heart, then this person is also يعني, considered amongst the Muslims. So this honorable ayah provides proof that faith is a higher grade than Islam. Iman being a mu'min is a higher grade than Islam, than being a Muslim, according to the scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ only those are the believers who have believed in Allah and His Messenger وسلم, and afterward doubt, but, but not, doubt not, but strive with their wealth and their lives for the cause of Allah. Those, they are the truthful ones. قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Say, will you not inform Allah of your religion while Allah knows all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth and Allah is all-knowing of everything. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ They regard as a favor to you, O Muhammad Wasallam, that they have embraced Islam. Say, count not your Islam as a favor to me. Nay, but Allah has conferred a favor upon you that He has guided you to the faith if you indeed are true. You're doing nobody a favor but yourself by accepting Islam. You're doing nobody a favor but, but yourself by establishing your prayers, fasting, paying your zakat, and the likes of these matters. It's not a favor to Allah or to His Messenger wasallam. The favor is actually upon you. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Verily Allah knows the unseen of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is the all-seer, 
of what you do. So this was the 18th ayah of Surah Al-Hujurat and the conclusion of this surah. And we see in it the clear principles of how to respect and deal with Allah and His Messenger وسلم, and how we should be with one another as Muslims and we ask Allah to make us of the mu'mineen, of the believers in Him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.